Howdy folks, today is a video about two lenses, which you have been asking about a lot of you um, and been excited about. There are two new lenses from Tokina, which um, should be a familiar household name, Tokina, to a lot of you, especially older photographers in the third party lens space. Um, they finally brought some autofocus lens offerings to Fuji, specifically the 23 millimeter 1.4 and the 33 millimeter 1.4 lenses. Tokina sent me these lenses about a month ago and um, not to keep, just to borrow, although they did send me a cool hat. I, I was gonna wear it, I forgot. Where's that cool hat? Here it is. Although the hat, I don't, I don't think they want that back like they do the lenses um, because it's gonna be all sweaty, especially after this, this video. There's some, some things that, well, we, we'll get to all that. But like all my lens reviews, I shall undertake to give you my best unbiased thoughts as best I can, um, as my only desire really with these lenses, well, there's two desires. The first desire is just to have an excuse to shoot, which I personally selfishly um, need. <laughs> I need lens reviews to get me out there um, taking photos. So that's, that's helped me selfishly. But my second desire is just to help you to find a lens or lenses that will meet your needs. And that's what I want to do here today. So we'll start there. Though I think it's very important to mention right at the outset that these lenses are uncannily similar to two other lenses by another notable third party lens manufacturer. But we'll come back to that. Let's first just answer the question, are these lenses good? And while I have not done an extensive lab based pixel peeping session with these lenses, testing sharpness and controlled environment and all that. I can say that I absolutely 100% would shoot with these lenses in any situation which I would normally reach for a couple of, of comparable Fuji lenses like um, my awesome 23 1.4 or even um, maybe more so I even prefer the 33 millimeter 1.4 offering here to the 30, 35 1.4 Fuji lens. My opinion is not popular there though for a lot of you people. But suffice it to say, these are uh, great lenses in my estimation. As far as image quality, optical precision, um, I don't see drastic differences between um, these Viltrox, I mean Tokina lenses and the Fuji lenses. These are great. Um, in real world scenarios, they focus sufficiently quickly with my active kids to nail focus most of the time and about on par with what I've come to expect with native Fuji lenses. Even wide open, they were plenty sharp um, without much of the chromatic aberration that I've come to expect out of a lot of the cheap third party manual focused Chinese lenses that I've been playing with on the channel lately. The bokeh is fairly clean and smooth. You do get some oddly shaped bokeh balls when stopped down at all because the blades are not very symmetrical. But wide open, I think they're fine. I don't really care about bokeh balls, but I know some of you do. And there's more flaring than I'd like to see pretty much across the aperture range. You can't focus quite as close as I'd like to be able to in some situations with these lenses, but it's not too bad. Um, and the aperture is clickless in both, both cases, which normally I would actually not mind for video, except that with Fuji, even with stepless lenses, it's impossible to get smooth or stepless exposure adjustments. So this is no advantage here whatsoever. Um, and along with many other third-party lens manufacturers, I wish they would just make these clicked. Whether to reduce development costs or to reduce quality control steps, they don't tend to do that, which is unfortunate, um, at least in the case of Fuji third-party lenses. Additionally, these lenses um, do not have dust or weather sealing. So something to keep in mind and something I particularly watch out for in very dusty desert scapes where I live it's a slight con for any lens in my book. So those are some drawbacks of these lenses, but aside from those, they seem to be excellent.
What I cannot speak to is the company's quality control. For instance, since they loaned me these, who knows if they sent the best、um, they could find、um, in in、uh, of the copies. But maybe they have poor QC practices, and maybe、um, you'll be rolling your dice with purchase. I don't know. Um, what sort of service and support do they offer? Only time will tell that as well.、Um, I'm unable to comment on those things. But here's the rub: these lenses are priced higher, more than a hundred dollars higher than another third-party lens brand that we've talked about on the channel before, and they are suspiciously similar. But before we dive into that topic, I do want to announce the winner of this gimbal right here. Um, in my last video, which was、um, not well watched, not many of you watched it. I offered this gimbal as a giveaway item, and、um, all you had to do was check out my other channel, build a better bike that I just started. This is my bike restoration channel, which only has a few videos out, but which I am extremely proud of, and、um, would very much appreciate if all you guys, especially any of you who have interest in restoration DIY projects or in mountain bikes or cycling, head on over to Build a Better Bike and follow me there. Anyways, I said I would give this gimbal away to one lucky random person、um, who subscribed to that channel, and after randomly choosing a video from the channel, which was my Stranger Things inspired restoration. Build video, and figuring out that there were 52 comments, I got、um, a number generated, and the winning number、um, was 15. That comment was by Area Studios. So congratulations, Area Studios, on your brand new, almost brand new,、um, slightly used by me, Zhiyun Crane 2S. Congrats. Okay, so back to the rub. The one thing、um, that's sort of the elephant in the room about these lenses, like I said, these are over a hundred dollars U.S. dollars more expensive and appear to be nearly identical to these two Viltrox lenses. And if there were even small improvements optically or performance, or if the QC service or support in Tokina was better than Viltrox. I could understand that maybe, but I have no evidence to suggest that Tokina is better than Viltrox in any way. In fact, these lenses appear to be nearly identical in every way that matters. Of course, this has been hinted at and、uh, rumored about already.、Um, find Fuji Rumors articles in the description to link to those discussions. And I trust Patrick at Fuji Rumors, but I also like to verify. And since I do happen to have these copies, the 23-14 and the 33-14 Viltrox lenses currently, soon to be given away in our Do Good With Your Camera dot com contest. By the way, check that out if you are in the mood to do some good and win some stuff. Since I have these lenses, though, for that, I thought we'd do some comparisons. The first and most obvious thing to compare is physical size and weight, and while they do appear slightly different, different size focus and、um, aperture rings, etc.,、um, the width and the height of the lenses are nearly identical. No surprise, also, that the respective weights are also nearly identical. There are a ton of different image quality tests I could have done, but、uh, there's a couple to me that would really cut to the heart of the matter pretty quickly. And one is bokeh ball signature. We know that Viltrox lenses have that unique bokeh ball shape due to the aperture blades not really being symmetrical. And now we know that Tokina also demonstrates that. And indeed, if we compare these lenses at f/2.8 at similar zoom ranges, we see an uncanny resemblance. The other thing I know from experience working with lenses is that coating affects color. Even within Fuji, there are minor variations in color with different models. Not super substantive, but I do see differences, and I have noted color differences between Viltrox and Fuji. So let's see if we can spot those same differences between. Viltrox and Tokina, or similarities, I guess, between Viltrox and Tokina. I couldn't find my color chart, so I just took a photo of my monitor, which has not been calibrated in some time. But whatever, it'll at least give us some clues. And we do see that there are no detectable color differences. So while this isn't conclusive, it seems safe to conclude that these lenses were created, if not in the same facility, certainly based on extremely similar optical and physical designs. What seems most likely to me is that Takina and Viltrox shared the same Chinese source or designer for their lenses. So the differences in price to me 
is concerning. If I were to give Tokina the benefit of a doubt here, um, there are two things I would think that maybe could justify the price increase. One is if they have better s service support, quality control practices, like I said, over Viltrox. And if they do, well, that certainly would be worth it to me. The only other thing to consider is the point that Patrick at Fuji Rumors brought up, um, that Tokina, according to Fuji, was the first to receive de developer protocols in a formal way from Fuji, whereas Viltrox started out having to reverse engineer Fuji's um, software API. Does Tokina have a competitive edge? I didn't do a side-by-side -side autofocus accuracy or speed test. I probably could, but that is far from an exact science with the methods that I would have at my disposal based on <laughs> prior attempts at doing those sorts of tests. So there are still a few lingering questions. But if it were me, if I was concerned about the best quality control practices, the best service, the best support, albeit um, Fuji isn't all that great, I would still go with Fuji. Um, because I think that that's a safer bet than Viltrox or Tokina. But if I were willing to compromise on quality control and support and service, I'd be willing to take a risk on Viltrox. As it stands right now, I don't think there's a compelling reason to choose Tokina over Viltrox. Um, maybe if we hear some anecdotal evidence to support that their support is better, QC, whatever, um, and across different countries, until then, um, Viltrox is who I would just recommend going with. Um, maybe if they reduce their price to compete with Viltrox, it would be different, but that's, that's the best I can give you right now. My advice to Tokina would be, first off, if you want to appear as more than cheap Chinese product brand, um, don't use cheap Chinese brand tactics. Don't rebadge stuff that is being produced elsewhere. Consumers are smarter than they've ever been in the history of buying stuff with more research at their disposal and more ways to get fast answers. You can't produce near identical products and expect no one to notice. So either don't do it, or if you do, talk to us more about it. Justify the price difference. If there are differences that we reviewers aren't seeing, tell us what they are. To me, it felt like I got some lenses for review and maybe there were some hopes that I wouldn't notice. And that's not fun for me. Even the hat doesn't make up for that. It makes me wonder if I hadn't noticed the similarities, I would have probably been called out by the community really fast. I'd have been embarrassed. I don't know. I just think you gotta be open and honest or it backfires. But either way, I did enjoy shooting with these lenses a lot, just like I do when I shoot with Viltrox. Got some photos I certainly will treasure, um, and studying these lenses got me off my butt. So for that, I'm grateful, and I hope that this video in some way has also inspired you fine folks to get off your butts as well and do some photography, and maybe do some good along the way. But these are the Viltrox ones. Anyway, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Remember to do good with your cameras, and We'll talk to you again real soon.